Greetings and welcome to week four, Justice 212 criminal proceedings. As you can see out my window, it is a beautiful sunny day here in southeast Alaska at least. Out this window here, I'm looking at uh, an awful lot of fall colors, an awful lot of yellows and golds, but the sky is brilliant blue. Uh, we have termination dust. Uh, for those of you that haven't been to Skagway, actually, I guess it's probably a lot like south, a lot of southeast. Uh, we go from sea level, hence all the cruise ships, uh, to 5,000 feet up there. To I'm looking at Upper Dewey Peak, you know, and and it's not a half a mile from here. So, so we go as the crow flies or the whatever, um, as the raven flies us in this area, I guess. Um, and it's got termination dust all over it, so it's bright white. Dewey, Upper Dewey Peak is brilliant bright white snow and uh, brilliant blue background and lots of sunshine. What a great day. And the neighbor was mowing up until a second ago, so we were going to have noise like uh, Chainsaw Guy last week, but he's done. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Let's see, week four, we are in uh, stop and frisk which we tend to say it that way. We tend to say it as stop and frisk uh, in quotation marks or italics or, you know, as, as one word, as it's one word instead of three words. And it's really not. It's, it's two totally different things. You have a stop and you need certain things to legally have your stop. And then you can also have a frisk if you deem necessary and if you have cause, but you don't have a frisk every time you have a stop and a stop doesn't always lead to a frisk. So it's not one word. I have gave you a link to the legal bulletin section on, uh, they call it investigative stops on stop and frisk. And it's, I believe, 12, 13, 14 pages long. So there's a lot of case law uh, and a lot of decisions on stopping and frisking. You know, the stop, <clears throat> the courts have ruled, the courts have ruled that a stop and frisk is a, is a Fourth Amendment search. Uh, it falls under the Constitution. Um, but, but there's different reasons for it, and you, and you need different things for it. Uh, the stop is is basically to to freeze things. I mean, the courts have said that if if we're in the middle of an investigation or we're beginning of an investigation, if if we need to figure out what's going on, we are allowed to freeze things so we can get a handle on it. Uh, it's meant to be short term. It's meant to be pretty much in a in a specific location. You know, stops don't move around. In theory, you can, you know, if you if you have a suspect, you're allowed to stop this suspect and maybe move them over here where this eyewitness can take a glance at them. Um, but that's really about it. The stop is really pretty much supposed to be conducted um, where you make it. You don't get to go back to the PD. You don't get to go run around and do other follow-up. It's mainly just to freeze the action, shut everything down to allow you to get a handle on things and figure out what's going on, figure out if this is your bad guy, um, you know, figure out whatever you need to figure out. You need, you, you need cause. The, the front of the first of the, uh, if you go to the legal bulletins, it says very, very, very first paragraph, Many law enforcement officers misunderstand the investigative seizure of a person referred to as stop and frisk. Some officers believe that any person walking or driving in public street is fair game and subject to seizure. And then he says, well, that's not true. You can't do that. Uh, you have to have reasonable suspicion. You have to have articulated. You go, you're going to have to back this up uh, on your report later, DA later, you know, why you stopped this person. Now, we're always allowed to stop and chat to people. Never, ever, ever a problem. Uh, you get a town like I've got, where I've got 10,000 tourists in town on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I'll walk in the boardwalk, and I'm walking the boardwalk. 
I walk up to God knows how many people in a day and just, you know, start a conversation. Um, certainly legally allowed to. If for some reason that led to something, which it never does, I, I, um, I'd be able to use it because I'm doing what I'm allowed to do, where I'm allowed to do it. So you're always allowed just to walk up and chat with somebody. Now, they're equally allowed to wander off and not chat with you. And that's the end of it. And you don't get to pursue them and you don't get to, um, you know, push it any farther. Although the courts have said that not cooperating with you, I got some sunshine here somewhere, that, uh, maybe it's this one over here. There we go. That not cooperating with you can be a factor in continuing on your investigation. So, so if you have reason to talk to this person, and if this person doesn't want to cooperate and tells you to go jump in a lake, that can lead to further stopping then and, and, and seizing. And uh, it, it can be an additional factor. But just walking up to somebody and chatting is, is always allowed. So let's see, where was that? So anyway, so you're supposed to uh, stop is to, to freeze what's going on. Um, let you conduct your whatever it is you need to do, your investigation. And then either uh, your question investigation either leads to something pretty much right away, pretty much as you speak, you start to get, you know, other feelings. Uh, you know, he's making movements or he's not cooperating or he's pointing you in some other direction or whatever. And, and then you continue on because you are finding out things. Or if you're not finding anything out and, you know, he seems to be on the up and up, then you're done. Kick him loose and you go to the next guy. It's just a temporary freezing. The frisk, on the other hand, can come out of the stop, but it really doesn't have... The frisk is for your safety and your safety only. That's the only thing it's for. And if you can't articulate why you felt, and it has to be individual. It can't be generic. It can't be, gee whiz, it's three o'clock in the morning and it's dark and we're by ourselves and this is a big guy. All those are good factors. All those are great factors and they can lead you to then why you need the frisk. But, but you cannot search every single, you can't stop and frisk every big guy at night by yourself. I mean, there, there has to be, it has to be an individual thing. You can't search, you know, the, uh, like I put on our discussion, um, stopping and frisking was a major, probably the major um, standalone point of New York crime fighting. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots of people got stopped and frisked. And the court said, nah, you know, you've gone too far. You can't do that. It's not that individual. You can't stop every young black male and every single one of them gets patted down. It, it just, you have to have an individual reason and you have to have an articulable reason. So if you can articulate why you want to pat that person down for your safety, you're then allowed to. And then you, we do this pat down that we're all familiar with, um, looking for weapons. Uh, we find a weapon, find something that feels like a weapon. We're allowed to take it. Um, we don't, we're not. You don't get to pat down for weapons, feel the baggie and take it. Um, you know, it's, it's not, something else can lead you there, but the, the weapons pat down does not. Um, so so that's, that's the two steps and they're two totally different things. And I thought it was interesting in the, in thinking about all of this and then applying it to last week's video, Frankie and the girls, the guys running through the woods, you know, which one of those things could have been a, a legitimate uh, a stop and, and why? I guess we're not going to frisk Frankie too much. Um, and, and Eric wrote uh, in one of his discussions about how, how Frankie is walking down the road, kind of staggering, and, you know, the, the trooper kind of keys on, you know, maybe this guy's had too much to drink. And Eric says, Gee whiz, I know everybody in my town, like those of us that work in little towns. So true, so totally true. 
I know everybody in my little town. I know how they walk when they're sober. I know how this guy's walking tonight. He's not sober. I mean, he just knows. When I'm teaching shoplifting classes to the merchants in town, that's what I tell them. I mean, they, they're kind of big on, well, we don't know what a shoplifter looks like, and we don't know what a thief looks like, and how do we know when somebody's... And I said, what you do know is you know what a shopper looks like. I mean, all day long, every single day, you watch people shopping in your store, and you know exactly what a normal tourist traveler shopper looks like. Um, they come in, they look around, they touch things a certain way, they hold things up in a certain ways, they talk in a certain way. You know what a legitimate shopper looks like. You know, so then when you see the non-legitimate guy, the person that comes in, isn't really looking at merchandise, isn't really, you know, going through things, isn't really, you know, spends more time looking around to see what you're doing than what they're doing, they don't look like a shopper. So it's process of elimination. This person does not look like an everyday shopper. Therefore, i.e., you know, probably my shoplifter. Um, and so with Eric saying that, that uh, you know, he just, he just can spot people because he knows them, I thought it was great on the slideshow this year on the PowerPoint, on the PowerPoint this week. Uh, I think I kept it here somewhere. There it is. Um, when it talks about why we have stop and frisk, it says, one of the slides says, today's stop and frisk laws grew out of the practical problems police officers face in preventing and investigating crime in public places. Usually officers deal with people they don't know and probably won't ever see again. Officers must rely on their professional training. So again, we, we are trained, we have experience, we know what suspicion looks like. And so we add that to why we want to stop this guy and talk to him. And I thought it was interesting that this slide talks about, you know, bad guys we don't know and we'll never see. And, and in Eric's case, he's applying it to people he does know and he sees every day. Uh, that was cool. Anyway, so that's what Stop and Frisk is this week. Um, everybody's doing good. You know, I felt really, really good when I saw the people signed up for this class because I knew it was going to be a, a really good class when it came to discussing and writing and experiences and stuff. And so far it has been. The first four weeks have been really good. So give a shout if you need anything. And I'll see you inside.